Okay, so this will be the fourth lecture out of chapter two. So in this lecture, we'll look at the common charges that elements uh, often make and like to make, and we'll use that to predict formulas that uh, elements make when they react with each other. Okay, so many elements, so this is something to remember. Many elements like to have the same number of electrons as noble gases. So there's something very stabilizing about the number of electrons that noble gases have. And if you remember, these are your noble gases, right? And group eight. So, um, so helium's got two electrons, neon's got 10 electrons. Right, this is the atomic number, which is the number of protons, but if it has no charge, then it has the same number of protons and electrons, right? <clears throat> so if helium's got two protons, then it also has two electrons if it has no charge. If neon's got 10 protons, then it also has 10 electrons if it has no charge. And argon's 18, uh, krypton is 36, xenon is 54. So many elements like to have the same number of electrons as those noble gases. <clears throat> Okay, so if we take lithium, so lithium is here, it's atomic number three, so it's got three electrons, right? So if it wants to look like a noble gas, it can either lose one electron and have two, like helium, or it can gain seven and, and have ten and look like neon. So if it loses one electron, then what would be the charge on lithium? Would it be plus one or minus one? So if it loses one electron, then it would be plus one charged, right? Because now it's got three positives because it's got three protons, but it only has two negatives because it only has two electrons. So it would be Li plus one. Or if it gains seven electrons, then what would its charge be? So then it would be seven negative, right? So it would have three protons, but it would have 10 electrons. So three positives and 10 negatives, so it would have a seven, seven negative charge. So which do you think lithium likes to do? It'd be plus one or negative seven? Like to lose one or gain seven? Well, it would rather just lose one than gain seven. So lithium likes to be plus one charged, and then it looks like he helium. So lithium plus and helium have the same number of electrons. If you remember, what is the word for that? They would be, if you remember, we covered this in a previous lecture, they would be iso, isoelectronic, meaning they have the same number of electrons, two. Okay, so sodium is here. 11 electrons, so if it loses one, it could have 10 like neon, or if it gains seven, it could have 18 like argon. So sodium, just like lithium, could lose one, and if it loses one, then it would be Na plus, or it could gain seven and be Na seven minus. So what does it want to do? Well, it doesn't want to gain seven, it would rather just lose one. So now it's got 10 electrons. So what else has 10 electrons would, would be neon. So Na plus is isoelectronic with neon. Uh, what about potassium? So potassium has 19 electrons. If it loses one, then it would have 18 electrons like argon. So potassium wants to do the same. So if you notice, there's a common feature here, right? All of these elements in group one like to lose one electron because then they look like the preceding noble gas in the periodic table. So what would rubidium like to do? Rubidium would like to be plus one. So basically, all of these elements in group one like to be plus one because then they have the same number of electrons as a noble gas. So rubidium would like to lose one electron and be plus one as well. Okay, what if we go to group two? So beryllium, four electrons, magnesium, 12 electrons, calcium, 20 electrons. So if they want to look like a noble gas, so beryllium could either lose two. If it loses two, then what's its charge? Then it would now be plus two, right? Because it would have four protons, but now it would only have two electrons. So four positives, but two negatives, so it's plus two charged. So this has two electrons like helium. So beryllium, two plus is isoelectronic with helium. Or it could gain six and be Be six minus, and then it would look like neon, right? Have 10 electrons. So what, do, what does it want to do? Lose two or gain six? Well, the answer is easy. It always wants to do whatever is less. So whether it's losing or gaining, it wants to do what's less. So lose two is better than gain six. Um, so beryllium likes to be plus two charged. Magnesium has 12 electrons. It could lose two and become Mg2+, and then it would look like neon, or it could gain six, 
and be Mg6 minus, and then it would look like argon and have 18 electrons, right? Because it's got 12. If it gains six, then it would have 18 electrons. So what does it want to do? Well, it wants to lose two and be Mg2 plus. So everything in group two, that's basically what they like to do. They like to lose two electrons. If calcium loses two, it's got 18. If it loses two, then it looks like argon and has eight. If it has 20 and loses two, then it has 18. So calcium loves to be plus two charged. Okay, so basically everything in group two likes to be plus two. Everything in group one likes to be plus one. So now we go to group three. Uh, so what do you think they like to do? Well, boron's got five electrons. It could either choose to lose three and have two, like helium, or it could choose to gain um, five and have ten, like neon. So beryllium could lose three and be B plus three, or three plus. Or it could gain five and be five minus. So it could choose to look like helium or choose to look like neon, which has two electrons or ten electrons. So same for aluminum. Aluminum could lose three. So aluminum is just below boron in the periodic table, right? They're both group three. So it could lose three and have 10 electrons like neon, or it could gain five. So it could gain one, two, three, four, five, and look like argon. So what does it want to do? Well, it always wants to do what's lesser, right? So it wants to lose three, not gain five. So everything here likes to be plus three charged. Except when you get down to the really heavy elements, um, then thallium um, could be plus three, or it could be, so the heavier elements, I think I have this wrote somewhere right here. So some of the metallic, that's right, so if you remember, so these are the metalloids, right? So thallium, lead, bismuth, tin, or metals. And they can behave a little bit differently than the non-metals. So they would, metals generally rather be positive charge than negative charge. <clears throat> so some of the metallic uh, main group elements that are of high atomic number, so high atomic mass, <clears throat> they can exist as more than one cation charge. So they can either have a charge the same as their group number or a charge that is their group number minus two. So it could be thallium plus three or three plus, or it could be one plus or a group number or group number, group number is three. So three plus, or it could be group number minus two. So three minus one, three minus two would be one. So it could be one plus. Okay, what about carbon and silicon? So now if we go to group four, so these like to be plus one, these like to be plus two, these like to be plus three. So what do you think group four would like to be? Well, they're right in the middle, right? They could either lose four electrons, so it could be C4 plus, and then it would look like helium with two electrons, or it could gain four electrons and be C4 minus, and then it would look like neon and have 10 electrons. So since they're right in the middle, they could go either way. So they could be plus four or minus four. So silicon could be silicon plus four or four plus, or silicon four minus, right? And two. But if you go to the ones at the bottom of the periodic table, so group four, so 10 and lead. So 10, it could be plus four plus four. So that's the group number, or group number minus two, two plus. So same for lead. It could be four plus or lead could be two plus, right? Okay, so we did that. So thallium could be plus one or one plus or just plus and thallium three plus. So 10 could be lose two electrons and be two plus or lose four electrons and be four plus. Same with lead. Okay, moving on. So if we go to group five, group six, and group seven. So group eight does not like to lose electrons at all. They are perfectly happy with the number of electrons they have. 
So that's why they're called the noble gases. They used to be called the inert gases because they don't undergo very many chemical reactions. They are perfectly content to keep the electrons that they have. Although when you get down at the bottom of the periodic table, xenon, radon, uh, they can be reactive, but helium, neon don't make chemical compounds with anything. Okay, so group five, so, so group four likes to be plus four or minus four. So once we get to group five, what, is, what does nitrogen want to do? So to look to look like a noble gas, it's got seven electrons to begin with. It could lose five and be N5 plus, and then it would have the same number of electrons as helium, right? It has seven, loses five, now it has two. Or it could gain three. If it gains electrons, then what's its charge is gonna be? It would be three negative. And then it would have 10 electrons like neon, right? So what does it wanna do? Lose five or gain three? Well, it always wants to do the lesser, so it wants to gain. So once you get beyond group four, then elements like to gain electrons rather than lose electrons. So the, no, no, so the non-metals like to be negatively charged. The metals like to be positively charged. Okay, so oxygen is in group six. So, okay, so these like to be negative three. And then oxygen is in group six. So it could either lose six electrons and be O6 plus, and then it would look like helium with two electrons, or it could gain two electrons and be O2 minus. And then it would have 10 electrons like neon. So it, of course, wants to gain two. So nitrogen wants to gain three, oxygen wants to gain two. So same would be for sulfur, selenium. These elements like to be negative two. So now we go to group seven. So what do you think fluorine and chlorine like to do? If nitrogen's negative, if group fives want to be negative three, group six wants to be negative two, group seven wants to be negative one, right? If they gain one electron, if fluorine gains one electron, then it looks like neon. Right, so it doesn't want to lose seven, it would rather gain one and be F minus. <clears throat> and then it has 10 electrons like neon. So all of the halogens, Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they like to be negative one charged. Okay, so if you just keep that in mind, that these that particularly applies to these main group elements. So group one, two, three, four, three, four five, six, and seven. If we're talking about the transition metals and the lanthanides and actinides, it's totally different. Um, these rules don't apply to them. So you can't just look at the periodic table and know what charge a transition metal likes to be or a lanthanide and actinide likes to be. <clears throat> you can just look at the periodic table and these main group elements know what they like to be. If we picked out strontium SR, what charge does it want to be? It wants to be plus two, right? Barium wants to be plus two. If you picked up selenium, what does selenium want to be? Selenium wants to be negative two. So. The main group elements, it's easy to know what their charge is just by looking at the periodic table. Okay, so this is useful because you can use that to predict what compounds elements will form. <clears throat> so lithium, what charge does lithium want to be? Well, lithium is here. Let's change my color, let's do a highlighter. So lithium is here, so it's group one. So it wants to be plus one charged, and fluorine wants to be negative one charged. So if these make a chemical compound, it will simply be LIF, that will be one of each, because the charge has to balance to zero. Plus one, negative one equals zero, so there's one of each. Okay, how about sodium? Well, sodium is here, it likes to be plus one. Oxygen is here, it likes to be negative two. So sodium likes to be plus one, oxygen likes to be negative two. So if you want to make this balance to zero, then how do you do that? Well, you need two of these, right? You would need two sodiums. So the formula of the compound that this would make would be Na2O, right? Because this likes to be plus one, and there's two of them, so that would be two positives. This likes to be negative two, and there's one of them. So that's negative two, so that equals zero, right? <clears throat> so if there's one of something a subscript does not use, it's understood that there's one of them. Okay, so magnesium and chlorine. So again, you just have to look and see where they're at in the periodic table. 
So magnesium is here, chlorine is there. Magnesium likes to be plus two, chlorine likes to be negative one. So this likes to be plus two, this likes to be negative one. So in order to make that work, you would need two coins, right? <clears throat> Again, since this is plus two, so that gives you two positives. This likes to be negative one, that gives you two negatives, so that would, that would sum to zero. So the total charge has to sum to zero. So that's what you can, you can use that to figure out the formula of the compound. Or an easy way to do this is just to take this number here and put it there and take this number here and put it there. So there's gonna be two chlorines and one magnesium in the formula. Okay, so if you look on the periodic table, calcium likes to be plus two. <clears throat> nitrogen likes to be negative three. So the formula of the compound they will make. So there's gonna to have to be three calciums and there's gonna to have to be two nitrogens. So it'd be Ca3N2 would be the formula of the compound it makes. And so if we just look at the charges, this likes to be plus two, so that's six positives. This likes to be negative three, so that's six negatives, so that equals zero, right? So we're just multiplying these numbers. Okay, cesium, if you look on the periodic table, cesium is here, so it's group one. And what is cesium gonna be reacting with? Nitrogen, so it likes to be negative three. So we'll need three of these and we'll need one of those, right? So this would form a compound of CS3 and would be the compound it makes. Okay, so in these cases, so I told you, so iron, where's iron at? Iron is here. So you can't just look at the periodic table and figure out what the charge on iron likes to be. So in this case, I'm gonna tell you, if it's iron plus three, and iodine is a halogen, it likes to be negative one. So what would the formula of this compound be? It would be FeI3, right? Because you need three, three of these to balance the charge of one of those, since each of these is negative one charged. Or if iron is plus two, so the transition metals, they can have different charge states. They can, iron likes to be plus two, likes to be plus three. So this would be FeI2 if iron was plus two charged, right? Okay, if you had copper two and sulfur, S2 minus. So since they're both plus two, so what would you do? Would you put the two here and the two here and say Cu2S2? And the answer is no. Um, when you have ionic compounds, you use the smallest ratio of subscripts. So there, two to two would be the same as a one to one ratio. So it'd just be CUS would be the formula of the compound. So you just have to keep that in mind, use the smallest ratio uh, of subscripts. <clears throat> okay, so here, if palladium was plus four charge, so four there and two here, so that would mean PD2O4. But again, you can reduce this, right? Instead of PD2O4, you could say PDO2 would be the formula of that compound. So use the smallest ratio. Okay, so 10. Um, as we said, 10 can have multiple charge states, right? It can be plus four or plus two. So if 10 is plus, four, plus two charge and it's with chloride, which is negative one charged, then you need two of these and there's a one there, so one of these. So that would be SNCl2 would be that compound, right? Or if 10 is plus four charge, so if we put that four there and this one here, then SNCl4 would be the formula for that compound. And again, we always have the charges always had to work out to zero. So we said 10 was plus four here, chlorine is negative one. So there's one 10, so that's four positives and that's four negatives, so this is zero. Or here we said this 10 was plus two and Cl is negative one, so that's two plus, that's two negative, so that is equal to zero, right? So for the transition metals <clears throat> or these heavier main group elements, you can't just look at the periodic table and know what their charge is, right? But for the other elements, you can. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully that made sense. <clears throat> and we will stop there.